So um, why don't we have some introductions and introduce yourselves? We know who I, you well, are. We can okay. start with you, though. Just, <laughs> yeah. I'm with my this is CJ Consulting. Um, the consulting engineers for the town central. I'm Pat Paul. I'm the highway director for Mass DOT in District 2. Okay. Uh, Rich Massey, I'm the project development engineer for Mass DOT. Nice to see you. I'm Doug Wayne, the District 2 design engineer. Nice. So, okay. I'm Mari Mulaney from the Franklin Regional Council of Governments. <laughs> Excuse me. The timeline and what, how we started. And <coughs> yeah. Excuse me. Sorry. I, water. I have this cough that will just not go away. Everyone, Craig Felton. I live in Sunderland. Okay. That's Beth Janini, Franklin Regional Council of Governments. Lauren Star, South Main Street. Um, Melissa Perot. Um, very late. Okay. Ellen Park, South Main. Elias Lee, Paper Road. Richard Trousdale, South Main Street. Okay. Jim Williams, Eight Park Road. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, yeah. We'll, we'll start with Wilson. South Main Street. Tom Zanowski, Hepburn Drive. Uh, Linda Lapaka, Hepburn Drive, also a historical commission. Dan Murphy, North Main Street. I see uh, South Main Street Posse. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Carol Ryan, uh, Barry Lane. Laura Williams, North Mountain Road. Bob Williams, North Main. Every team I shop police chief. George Jeremy, uh, superintendent. Cam Gagarin, North Main Street. Uh, Peter Gagarin, North Main Street. Hollis Graves, South Main. Christine Graves, South Main. All right, great. Oh, a couple more folks coming That's in. Okay. All right. Um, so do you want to give a brief update on where we are on the project right now? How about that? Since like how we started and yeah. where we got to we got. Might be a good. Uh, good evening, everyone. Uh, my name is John Morgan with CHA Consulting. Uh, just a, a brief overview of um, where this project, uh, when this project started and how we've gotten to the point we're at now. Uh, so the project started, uh, was initialized back in, I think, 2012. Um, but we had some meetings early on, and the design really got kicked off around 2015. Uh, we did some conceptual designs at that time. Uh, we came up with a few different alternatives for um, providing for uh, all the users of the roadway. Um, one thing that we are required to do um, through the Transportation Improvement Program is to uh, provide a complete street, so it has to be um, has to accommodate vehicles, pedestrians, and bicyclists. It has to accommodate all the users of the roadway. Uh, so we came up with a few different alternatives. These included uh, uh, the initial concept was to to widen the road. Um, the existing road is about 26 feet wide. Um, our initial concept was to widen the roadway to 32 feet to provide five foot paved shoulders that would accommodate bicycles. As part of that concept, we would also reconstruct the existing sidewalks um, where they are now, which is set back off of the road. Um, some of the initial outreach meetings, uh, we got feedback on that design that there was concern about the widening of the road and uh, how that would look and potentially increase speed. So based on the initial feedback that we received, um, we looked at other alternatives. And one of the alternatives was to provide a shared use um, bicycle path to get the bicycles off of the road and um, have a have a space for them that would not be along the side of the roadway with the vehicles. So we looked at e either providing an exclusive bike lane or a shared use path, which would be used by both bicycles and pedestrians. Um, ultimately, the, the uh, option that was selected was to go with a shared use path on one side of the road, um, keep the roadway that's 26 feet that it is today, and have a sidewalk on the other side of the road um, set back where it is today. That was the uh, design that was uh, progressed to the 25% design level and submitted to MassDOT for review. Uh, their review came back with uh, 
some minor concerns, but uh, they basically uh, had accepted that design and were ready to uh, advance the project with that design. Um, after that, we, uh, we got some, um, some more feedback from the town uh, that uh, people did not like the shared use path uh, concept. Uh, so we had a meeting back in, I think, December to further discuss uh, the project. And at that time, uh, the, the, the opinion, the majority opinion was that uh, we should go back to the initial um, concept of just widening the roadway uh, and reconstructing the sidewalks where they are today. So. That's where we're at now. Uh, one of the things that we were, that was um, brought up during that meeting is do we have to actually go out to 32 feet with, that, with the roadway? Is that required? Uh, that is the width that meets the Mass DOT standards for 11 foot travel lanes and five foot shoulder. The, anything below that requires a, what is called a design exception uh, from Mass DOT. And in order for them to approve a design exception, we have to have good justification. Um, there has to be some, some enough impacts um, to justify not going out to meet what is the standard roadway and bicycle lanes for, for safety. So um, I reached out to MassDOT to get a, a, an initial opinion whether there there would you know, they would support the design exception. Uh, and I believe, I'll, I'll let them speak to this, but I, I believe that the, we may be lacking in the ju justification. So that's where we're at right now. Uh, so we're, we're trying to figure out uh, what the best way to go forward is. And, and Did you say lacking in justification? Yes. Okay. Just out of curiosity, what is the justification that you presented? Because I think that we had those implications at the last meeting. Right. I mean, there would be the historic nature of the road, the scenic nature of the road, the character of the road. Uh, there are, there would be no additional, uh, the width of the road isn't going to involve any additional land taking. So we don't have any additional land takings. But uh, it really comes down to the, the character of the road. There isn't, um, and, and the cost of the, of the project, but there isn't a lot of justification. Um, there is, there's, it's mainly to try to keep a, a, character, a character of the road issue. Um, that's, that's really the justification that we have. Being a state and a national scenic byway isn't some kind of a justification to maintain the character of the road. I find that totally ridiculous. Yeah, it's, it's not my call. Yeah, I, yeah. I disagree with the justification. Not on all due respect. Yeah. I, I I'm not a civil, um, but I watched a lot of civils do work and I read a lot of stuff online, and I think every civil I've ever her talk or every documentation I think in public, they're going to tell you if you widen the road, your speeds are going to increase. Um, I, I would say that you're coming into the, in the, the main justification, and, and, and forgive me, I, I'm not, you know, the, the, the historic and all that, I'm not downplaying those things, but to me it's all about safety. That, that is the criteria that it's a concerning to me. As that road goes wider, you're going to increase speeds. Um, it's proven, um, it's known, it's, it's, I think it's a factual statement. Um, we got a thickly settled area. There's a lot of residential uh, homes in there by definition. I, I think the, uh, the other concern is, is that we start, we would have what, four or five foot bike paths. Then you get up by Claybrook Road and all of a sudden your, your, your four or five foot uh, bike paths decrease okay. down to six inches if that before you run into the guide rails um i think there's i think the overwhelming concern is public safety to try to keep that road as narrow as possible and, and that's been a concern all along is the speed because we know the speed problems we have now here are pretty 
because uh, we've clocked them at upwards of 50 yeah. miles an hour yeah, and higher. Yeah. Higher than 50s, right? uh, yeah, I'm sure the chief could probably tell us a few stories too. Yes. Well, first of all, I'd like to say that I think if you were going to any town in this region and trying to come up with a <clears throat> great plan for a complete street uh, that had uh, you know, relatively decent access for pedestrians and bikes and had scored and, and had and if your town came forward and said, gee, we'd like to put in sidewalks, um, access for bicycles, and we'd like to purchase scores of mature shade trees, people would roll over to get that, and that's what we have right now. So I think, the, to me, the historic character of the street, the how things are laid out is extremely important. I totally agree that we should be traffic calming. I think everyone who lives here wants to do that. The proposal that we put forward in the last meeting was to go back to that plan, but to try to skinny down the travel lanes a little bit to help with the calming to maybe 10-5 instead of 11. To look at three-foot bike lanes if it's possible. To give some on-road bike access because we do have pedestrian and slow-moving bike access on the sidewalks. And I think that what we're proposing has the least impact, the least change, could potentially help calm the traffic and, and meets the needs of the uh, complete streets, which frankly, I think we have a complete street to start with. Um, and we also talked about some mitigation at the two ends of North and South Main to try to bring traffic to slow down as you approach what is a densely populated center of town. Get the designer. Yeah, I was going to say, and also, um, but we get our friends from MassDOT here probably to get some impact, uh, some feedback on from you guys too, and then, and then we'll get to some questions. Um, I'm Doug White from MassDOT at the Northampton office, and. Uh, you, excuse me, can I just keep you with me a second? Did yeah. you want to, yeah, you're trying to call on somebody else here? No, I was just saying, can you actually stand up while you speak just so everybody okay. can hear? Yeah. It's not, not the best acoustics in the room. I don't want to put you on the spot, but. Make sure you need your target. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, just so you know, um, you know, we're not picking on the town of Sunderland. We deal with this on every single job that uh, we design, both even in our own in-house designs. It's a statewide policy. Uh, to make sure, of course, as you know, like in the 60s and 70s, roads were designed just for vehicles. We got wider and wider. Um, so the policy was enacted to make sure bicycles and pedestrians have a place on the road. And it's implemented. We have a complete streets engineer in Boston, and her name is Michelle Vanilla. And she reviews these projects along with us. And. Um, when she looks at them, you know, if you have a shared use path, which was the initial design, um, it needs to be eight to 10 feet wide, excuse me. And or else you have to have five foot shoulders on each side of the road. And we, we come across a lot of jobs where um, people are concerned about excess speeds. Um, and it is true, you know, if you have a big wide quarter, people tend to perceive that they can go a little faster. Mm -hmm. But it's also true that wider shoulders have a safety benefit, um, especially during the winter, during snow plowing. So it's a difficult issue. Um, but for this category of road, um, the narrowest lane width that we can usually allow is 11 feet. Um, this is a, a collector road. It's considered an urban area, even though it's a suburban looking historic district. And it's a beautiful town. Uh, district, but we would require an 11 foot lane and a five foot shoulder. Um, and that would allow us to satisfy the statewide transportation policy. Um, as far as justification for the, it's called the design exception, I sit on the design exception committee. And the two primary justifications are um, environmental impacts, such as wetlands. Um, excessive tree cutting, um, impacts the streams, and then also the other justification is the taking of private property. And this situation in North Main Street, of course, it's a very extra wide corridor. So as far as 
the justification to taking private property. Um, there really is no need to take private property in order to fit in the 32 foot wide road. Um, it also doesn't involve tree cutting, and there are no wetlands, if I'm correct, John, not even up at the north end. Right? Yeah, I don't think there are any that I'm aware of. So those are the standard justifications. Uh, and again, this is an exception process. It comes down through the Federal Highway Administration, which is funding part of this project, or a good portion of it. Um, there's a particular format. It has to be well documented and justified. And then it has to go before our committee in Boston. And uh, the deputy chief engineer is the chair of this committee. And there's representatives from all the districts, and even federal highways sits on the committee. So as far as typical justification, this <coughs> just really doesn't lend itself to the environmental or um, right-of-way justifications. So <coughs> it's really atypical. There's no physical reason not to widen it. Right. Um, so we, we totally understand your concern about the traffic calming. Um, and we have that on many many projects as well. So we're kind of at a, you know, a, it's a difficult point. Um, you know, we cannot advance this project without um, ensuring that there's bicycle accommodation. It's just part of the federal funding, part of the Mass DOT process. Are bicycles allowed on the sidewalk? Um, yeah, they're not prohibited, but it's just that that's not considered bicycle accommodation, uh, even by bicycle advocates, because if the sidewalk is busy, um, it's too, really too narrow, standard five-foot sidewalk is too narrow for two-way bicycle traffic. The narrowest we can normally allow uh, a separate path to be called bicycle accommodation is eight feet. And that was in your original design, which we were fine with. Okay. I'm just going to try to get to the questions. Or the gentleman over there, you had a question earlier? Yes, and I'll get to you, Doug, and then. Yes, I do. I have several questions, but I'll make it short. Uh, what would prohibit us from doing what Northampton and Amherst have done in their streets by putting not a bump, but a gradual a speed rise with brick? on the top of that rise, slows traffic down, does exactly what we're talking about, speed to speed. speed. And you can see them if you haven't looked uh, on Elm Street in Northampton. Amherst has them by the college. Uh, going down along Amherst College. So uh, that certainly would reduce speed and resolve the problem of speed on the streets. I will come back to more questions later. Those about speed tables or and they are being used more and more. We don't normally allow them on an arterial street, but this is not an arterial, correct, John? This is a collector. I think it's a collector. Uh, Check. So, I thought it wasn't an arterial. Yeah, John, have to remind me if this is arterial or collector. Um, occasionally they're used on arterial, but it's discouraged just because uh, we like to keep the state transportation route, you know, the higher priority roads for emergency vehicles. Um, we like to keep them open and available so that police and first responders can get quickly to where they're going. Elm Street in Northampton is straight up to Cody Dickinson Hospital. Yeah, um, the only difference I can think of there is that's a city owned and operated street. So they have their own standards and we would we would not prefer to do that. Um, now this is this is a town run as well. So okay. I'm not saying we're not ruling that out, but uh, uh, it, it is an arterial. It is an arterial. Okay, so normally we wouldn't want to see a speed table on arterial. But I can think of a couple of reasons where it has been allowed uh, in a more urban, you know, visit to Boston. Right. If we're talking about safety, yeah. and that would be a major factor in safety, I don't see reasoning for the not allowing Yeah. Um, you know, as far as addressing the increase in speed due to going, what's the current shoulder width proposed? Or would your narrow shoulder width be two feet? I think you're proposing. With, with the 26 foot, foot, foot roadway, it would be a two foot shoulder. So you'd be increasing the shoulder width by three feet on each side. Yeah, I personally wouldn't see a dramatic, wouldn't expect a dramatic increase in speed by a change in three feet of shoulder width. Um, you know, if you were going to eight feet or something like that, that would count. 
definitely going to change. I mean, we all know that there is speeding on North and South Main Street right now. Yeah. So, and uh, same for any street, street we thought road. about it. Yeah. On any straight road, I think that would be expected. Uh, the, maybe some speed table. We'd have to really look into whether we could we could uh, go along with something like that. I'm not saying no. I'm not saying yes. But I mean, uh, it is a residential street, and there is a need for school children to cross the street to get up to Sunderland Grammar School. And if you don't do something about the speed, uh, there's going to be an accident. And we all know that. Okay. We, we have a question over here. Yeah. Uh, really, the kind of comment be on, on the safety part, um, being a you know, fairly avid biker myself, um, you know, if, if, if you were telling me this was going to be uh, a bike lane that went, uh, you know, from here to Turner's Falls, and you know, connected into the bike trail there and everything else. Um, you know, I would take the point more that that might be an, a safer route for a lot of people um, to have, you know, to have that wide shoulder the whole way. Um, but that's obviously not going to be the case. Uh, you know, we've just got this. North Main Street distance, it's not going to, you know, and as Tom was getting to, uh, then you get down to where you've uh, got about a, a, yeah, a, yeah. a foot before you're, uh, you know, in, in, into the guardrail of the woods. Um, and honestly, you know, that's the part of the road that also gets curvier and you don't have that long line of sight. I'm not worried when I'm biking down um, North Main Street with the current shoulder because um, I know cars are see me from a long way away. Yeah, one uh, thing that I could just say that we, we do have bicycle advocates that sit on this design exception committee. Yeah. We have some from Mass Bike and also we have uh, some from Mark Boston. And uh, you know on every single job they're they're really advocating for us to put in <coughs> five foot minimum shoulders. And so if, you know we have to convince them as well and they're bicycle advocates so yeah. it's a tough situation here. Um, well it would be interesting to see if if they I mean because those are the folks. Who, I, mean, it's the, I mean, I'm not in a cycle club. I don't do it like that. But you know, those folks are out there in large numbers. Um, you know, most of the year, certainly big in big numbers in this three seasons. Um, and I, I, you know, I'd be curious to find. I mean, it's, I certainly know once I get to that, um, you know, North Sunderland part, you know, where things wouldn't change, that's where I'm looking to get off, you know, as, as fast as possible. Well, we're not, um, we weren't mandating a shared use path on the side of the road. That was just, right. that came up as one option <coughs> the town that they selected. Um, I, we would be happy with either the eight-foot shared use path and narrow shoulders or the... But also the eight use, the eight foot, the shared use path. Again, it's nobody, yeah, it the cyclists. Like aren't going to use that. They're not going to cross for, for multiple reasons, including they're not going to cross over to go up a mile and then cross back. Um, I would agree and I, I think, yeah, I mean, I think the sidewalks, like people are alluding to, work for the slow-moving kids <laughs> that, that go along uh, and share the road well with everybody else. And then, and, you know, everybody else is on the road. And if this was something that really was, it seemed like it was going to uh, provide additional safety for cyclists, I'd be all for it. I'm, um, but, I don't see, I actually see the opposite because I see it potentially speeding people up and then, uh, you know, right when, um, you know, getting into the choke point, uh, they're going fast and, and actually getting a speed limit that's allowing them to go, feel like they can go even faster. So yeah. I, yeah. One of the things I just wanted to try, I want to try to make sure that we get in as many people with questions. So let's, I want to just try to shift around so that we don't have just a small pocket of people dominating a conversation. So I'm going to try to keep up. I think you were next, and then you, know, and then you, and then you. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I actually have a follow-up question too. On if I could just for one second, and we can get to this later. Is you were talking about how you don't, you haven't seen a speed increase when the road increase. I'd be curious to know what data you have to back that. I just, I just wouldn't expect one. I don't know if I have any data. Okay. Okay. All right. Thanks. Uh, Yep, Dan, and then you're thinking <laughs> Go for it. Yeah, okay. Um, my name is Nancy Pick. I live on North Main Street. And 
I'm just a little distressed by the tone. You're sounding very bureaucratic, and I don't think of Massachusetts as being so sort of rule-obsessed and hidebound, and I feel like you're getting overwhelming sentiment that everyone in this town wants to see traffic calming on that road, and I haven't seen anything that you have proposed that's going to slow down the cars. One thing I can say as far as the width is uh, what tends to slow people down are vertical objects close to the edge of the road. So whether we paved the extra three feet or not, that's kind of why I don't really expect the difference in speed. Um, traffic calming usually involves like, physically high objects that, that create the narrowing effect. Crosswalks, flashing lights, you see it all over Amherst now. I don't understand why you're... But we're not... Um, Again, this is the town's design that we, we reviewed, so we're not pushing uh, or advocating for any particular design elements. It's really your, your choice as long as you know, it meets the healthy transportation policy. So, But if, if we meet your rules, rules, then we need something back that's going to slow down the traffic. I think that's only fair. might be good in that, in that respect, yeah. because I, I think, especially, I think... And also the sentiment is that there's a lot of bikers in town too, so we're, we're really trying to balance all that because we've got a lot of, uh, there's a, a number of fuel that I know of in this, in this room, so we have a lot of avid support for that in addition. And I think from the get-go, traffic calming has been, because kind of along the lines of what you were saying, is one of the things I haven't heard is, and it's interesting that there's property rights issues and um, what was the the other uh, environmental. right environmental but nothing about safety and that's safety for bicyclists and pedestrians and safety for everybody except the motor vehicles mm -hmm. and i would think as part of a complete street safety of those two <coughs> other components would be very high out there obviously we've got designs in there for safety of motor vehicles but i think well the five foot shoulder is uh either driver for bicycle safety I mean, again, bicycle advocates on our committee, they fight for that on all the projects because they consider that a uh, very important safety feature. Okay. Um, Dan? I, you know, I'm not sure how productive this is, but it feels like we're having sort of like a split the baby sort of argument because yeah. whatever benefits these safety things bring to this narrow stretch of road disappear the moment we leave that. And so I feel like the cost of this is way exceeding the benefit uh, because if there is a benefit of any sort to you know riding a bike through Sunderland or driving a car through Sunderland, you lose it the moment you leave this little zone. And that so the historical impact which you guys do not consider disappears. Uh, in, it, it just seems like we're, we're way overweighing something that is um, really not persistent, you know, beyond this very narrow area. So I guess I, I'm not sure, you know, it doesn't sound like you guys are in the position to consider things like the impact on the town historical district or the impact on the aesthetics of this or what have you. But I think that's what you're hearing here is that everybody's like, the benefit here is minimal. The benefit here is transient, it disappears quickly, and we want to see more consideration of these other factors that are very important to the people who live here. Yeah, well, I mean, this is your project, and I'm pretty sure the town of West of this job um, be on the tip. Um, and it's, you know, you're, you're in control of the design, so you, you can propose traffic calming elements that are additional to what's in the plans right now. Hey, John, are there crosswalks, or uh, what crosswalk treatments would be proposed? Yeah, we had proposed uh, a couple of crosswalks, uh, mid-block crosswalks, that would be uh, textured and uh, colored stamped concrete. So they wouldn't be raised in the original design that was proposed, but they were uh, intended to really stand out. Uh, we also had the uh, flashing... Uh, uh, flashing warning lights proposed, which I understand Mass DOT no longer allows. Uh, federal Highway no longer. Allows. Uh, federal Highway no longer allows. So there's a substitute, though. Okay. Yeah. So Just we may have to change. One, one last thing. I, I don't want to be critical of you or no, people. Okay. I mean, it's it's okay. about person. I think I think I'm just trying to. Figure, I think we're talking apples and oranges here, and I feel like that's 
what's going on. I think Dan had a comment about Yeah, just don't be quick. Uh, with an engineer's eye, I look at the corner, I see a big wide right away. I see this room, this common lands in the middle. If we could get you know, people who can't go right on the road on these areas and also provide connection between a boat ramp and the French's Ferry Road. So I looked at it, I was an advocate for the shared use. I would love to see, you know, I'd love to see an exception to reduce the shared use path to six, six and a half. Uh, you know, that, I think that we did in Northfield, they went to six foot sidewalks. I don't think anybody complained about little widening. I wish we could find a place where we could you know, have the 26 feet of pavement, 11 foot lanes, two foot uh, on the edges for the bikes so that there's kind of continuity because when you get up, get up past the end of the project, it's going to be narrow again. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if there's any design exception for that. I mean, when you count the number of bikes we're going to have, I look at the counts on the city engineering standard. And I, I'm estimating we'll get about 10, 10 bikes an hour in peak season on the ship use path. So for me, it's like, well, why I'm all six and a half, six, six and a half work? And then we'll, especially when we have the sidewalk on the inside of the street. Yeah, well, um, you know, to address the historic nature of the, the district, I mean, that's not normally a, a justification. I haven't seen it before, but I mean, this is a unique situation. Um, if we were to try to pursue something like that, um, you know, we would have to convince people in Boston, which I'm not saying it's not possible. It's just I haven't seen that before. Uh, we do a lot of design exceptions. Um, they're quite common, uh, but they're they're most always for you know very excessive cost uh, due to your incremental widening or due to wetland filling of wetlands and having to take too much private property. So that would have to be a unique. We would have to you know, have a discussion with the design exception committee and just see if that could be entertained. I just haven't seen it before. Good, Scott, do you have a follow up in a minute. Okay, okay. go ahead. Yeah, Jim Williams from Park Road, uh, used to live on North Main Street, all my life, grew up there. Um, I see we're, we're in a dilemma here because we've got a number of options on the, on the table and we're not really sure which direction we're going. Uh, personally, I would like rather see the roads widen to 32 feet and uh, and not or think about the, the shared use path only because I think a shared use path is probably the worst idea ever because bicyclists are not going to use it. Um, they're going to use the road and they will and unless it's just a, a kid riding a bicycle. Plus, if they were going to use it, now you're going to have people walking dogs and bicyclists on the same path. Four miles an hour, 25 miles an hour. I don't think it's going to work, even if there's a space. So I'm not in favor of that. I'd be totally in favor of the widened, widened uh, road. But if we could apply for uh, some kind of a, an exception, I would be in favor of that too. But I just can't see. I'd rather not do the project at all than to go with a shared use path. I think they, one, and then you, there's one woman before you, Will. Yes. My question is how we became an urban area. I moved recently to this neighborhood, and it was because of its rural area, its farms, its farm traffic. On yeah, we struggle with that all the time. I mean, it certainly. So, what's the next has, has category down? Would we be in a different category? And well, it's just the village criteria? density, is all it is. Um, what? The, the density of the village um, is why it's. <coughs> Housing density. You said village. You yeah. said village. <laughs> <laughs> well, compared to the outlying areas, it's okay. a little, it's a little it's All of so we only have urban, whether it's people, village. and outlying. Is that right? Yeah. This is not either. This is this is a community, and I think what we're looking for here is something that strengthens a community in its ability to hold everybody equally in terms of pedestrian farm vehicles as well as commuter traffic and so forth and and i think that's what we're looking for is or i'm looking for is something that holds the community and if we're an urban area perhaps we could have an exception and be a suburban area <laughs> and thus yet have some different or atypical justification for what we're asking for that would hold a community together. And I don't know whether the urban area is what's causing this. No, that's not, that's not the, um, all areas have to have bicycle accommodation. So if this was categorized as uh, rural, it wouldn't make a difference for the bicycle width. 
to the bicycle width. Yeah. Okay, now we have to, to stop looking at individual pieces like that and, and, and deal with the whole community and how that <coughs> works in order to be able to go forward with this, which I think this community wants to do, but in a way that strengthens the community is safe for people of all kinds on whatever they're traveling on, skateboard or whatever. Um, but that seems to be where we're, we're splitting, is that the people who live here want something that's going to strengthen and, and make the community safer. And, and MassDoc seems to want something that's in their book up there in Boston. And it's not here. It simply doesn't, doesn't fit here, whether you call it urban or not. It's not designed or cannot be designed for this community, which you yourself have said is atypical. <laughs> Will, you got a question about that? Um, yeah, uh, so South Main Street is wider than North Main Street. If you have, uh, if you if you had your, uh, I've measured it, my guy, I actually curved the curve, my guy, it was 30. 20, 30. Yeah. So if you did your 11-foot uh, lanes with your four-foot shoulders instead of five-foot, you'd end up with the same width street on North Main Street as South Main Street. The, the, bite, the, the shoulder would be twice as wide on, on either side, and we wouldn't be having these streets getting wider, wider, wider. We'd have a match between North and South Main Street. <laughs> except, except no curve. Yeah, there's no curve. <coughs> yeah, no curve. I mean, but anyway, that's, so I mean, uh, for me, you know, the street wouldn't really seem any wider than South Main Street, because it wouldn't be any wider than South Main Street. You'd have twice as wide a shoulder, it's hard. I can I, It's not hard to imagine that a foot of pavement on either side is going to be a problem. I no, we use that to for the shoulders yeah. on certain jobs. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I mean, that might be a compromise. Um, again, like I said, we, we normally have to justify it with right of way and uh, environmental impacts, but you know, maybe we can throw in the historic character of the road and yes. maybe a foot won't make a difference. So that's a possible compromise. Yeah. Yeah. There and then. Uh, um, yeah, first, thanks for being here. Uh, it is, uh, <laughs> it's a challenge for you, and we appreciate <laughs> you, uh, you being here. Um, a couple of things, uh, uh, I run a, a bike touring company called River's Edge Cycling that's here in town. I also um, s serve on the Pathways Committee that was involved in um, trying to come up with um, solutions here. And, and our biggest concern was about the width of the road uh, for North Main. Um, that sort of prompted us to start thinking about other things. Um, I also serve on um, Mass Bikes Pioneer Valley chapter. I'm on the board of directors for that, so I'm one of those advocates that is always saying, yes, give us more, give us more. Um, here I'm saying that we really need to be sensitive to um, what is our environment in here in the village um, um, is the, kind of that cultural environment, and it's the the scale of the roads um, and the, the scale of the community. So I, I appreciate having served 30 years in DCR, um, I appreciate the environment and, and wetlands and, and cutting trees and all of that, but I think we need to have sensitivity for a village environment as, as well, and, and, uh, and you seem receptive to that. Um, the, the other thing that, that I can speak to from experience is that situation where you go from a pretty wide um, shoulder um, that is lovely in certain places um, to a, essentially no shoulder, which is what we would experience here as you went north of town heading towards Falls Road, which is one of the most popular um, bike routes in, in uh, certainly in the valley. And we've been involved in experiences where um, you have the exact same kind of condition. Um, riders who may not be familiar with the area get confused and, and crash when the um, when the road narrows down. So I, I think it really is important to think about the context of what do we do at, at this part of the road um, and, and what happens half a mile up the, up the street. 
So I really do think that um, there is uh, uh, there is a compromise here where by narrowing the shoulder width, um, I think it would be um, regarded by the thousands of cyclists who, who do this route as, as a huge improvement over what exists there now um, and would not be such a dramatic change when um, you leave the project area uh, and head north. So um, I'm delighted to hear you say, you know, maybe there is an opportunity to compromise uh, on that. I, I think that would be a, a, a big help. Um, I, I'll second um, Will's comment about, um, you know, if we narrow that shoulder a bit and have parity across North and, and South Maine, um, that has certainly been one of the things that our committee has been looking to as we look at this opportunity. We really ought to be setting the stage for what the, uh, you know, what South Maine ought to, ought to look like as well. So, Again, thanks so much for being here and, and uh, hearing uh, the many comments. Yeah, I can think of a similar situation in a way. It's not a road, but we were redoing the aquatic rail trail. You know, we were trying to get it 10 feet, and uh, we came to the Hadley Town Common. Um, they were very sensitive about the common area, so we narrowed it down to 8 feet there. Yeah. Um, you know, below our normal standards. So we do, in the future, consider that. Yeah. That's a good point about the safety of the transition zones, too, because no matter what, it wouldn't matter what we do here, you're still getting dumped down to that very tiny yeah. spot. And that, that and especially, as Doug mentioned earlier, the road does get very twisty at that point, too. Cur curves yeah. and climbs at right. that yeah. point. You, you got a question? Hi. I'm Maureen Mullaney from the Franklin Regional Council of Governments. This is kind of the age-old problem where um, some policies coming <clears throat> out of Boston for the entire state, even with good intentions, kind of miss the mark when it comes to our rural area sometimes. Um, I have to echo the comments about the state and national scenic byway. There's only, I think, nine scenic byways in the state. Seven of them are in Western Mass, and this road is the only national scenic byway in the state. Uh, it just feels like the waiver uh, criteria are totally eliminating very important characteristics of a roadway and a community by only focusing on um, property takings and environmental concerns, which are important, but there are also other important factors which um, play into what's happening here. I guess I have two questions for you. Well, one other comment. Um, there are projects that have come out of District 1, which is the Berkshire region and some of our Franklin County towns that have used shoulder treatments to create a visual narrowing without an actual narrowing, like um, different colored um, pavement or concrete that you know kind of focus the eye towards the travel lanes and not so much the shoulders giving you the idea to you know pick up speed. So wondering if some shoulder treatments could be considered if, it, if a four-foot shoulder design was pursued, that would require a waiver, though, even four feet, right? Anything less than five? Yeah, sounds like yeah. it is. My exception. And my last question is, do you ever have um, folks come in and argue their case in front of the waiver committee? That's a good question. Um, well, we can all be there. <laughs> <laughs> I think that they, uh, that there would be value in having the project proponent make their case. Usually what happens is we would, we would uh, schedule a separate meeting with the complete streets engineer in Boston. She's very reasonable, and, uh, and we have to approach the issue with her first to see if she can redeem this. And, uh, I don't think we, took, we, we talked much about the historic nature of the street when we were first talking to her about the design exception. Um, obviously, it's an important concern of the town, and we will now bring that up with her. Um, the town, you know, it also sounds like traffic calming is extremely important. I'm not sure if, you know, if you guys will want to pursue additional traffic calming. We need to know all about that before we broach a new idea to them. Okay. You go and then Dan. I'm Rich Massey from MassDOT, and I'll just say uh, regarding the FR Cog's uh, comments about the scenic byway and uh, this gentleman, former Mass Bike Pioneer Valley, um, letters um, expressing 
you know, your feelings and your opinions about what is appropriate for this project in this region. <coughs> Something that would be useful if we had when we brought this back to someone to consider. I, I was going to bring that up as well. Letters, you, you should all know, letters are uh, probably more powerful than what you all think they are. So. Uh, could you write the address for us? Up on the <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'd have to get it for you, to be honest with you. I don't know when to address them to you. You can send them to our district office. Yeah, I can give you that address. One of the problems with that, unfortunately, though, is that, it, in, is that we go through the entire design process. It costs money to go through the design process. And, and then, That's a good point. And, and then, right. then to add changes to the design um, is another. And not only do you cost more, but you slow down the entire TIP process. So if you had an idea of what's acceptable before we get to the, the letter campaign, or, or we could give different, and, and, and Jim's gone, but but if if you know if, if you went if, if you're involved with the thing from the initial where they co the combined path the combined path was just the the path unfortunately the path of least resistance at that point um, to a narrower roadway to, right. to, to to stay to stay with the narrow narrow roadway it was it was absolutely no one's idea. <coughs> But when you start when you start having the, the discussion about you know sending the letters, all of a sudden you know you can you end up redesign costs, you slow the project down, and you don't know you don't know what we're doing. And and, and I would I would also say that you know when you when you talk about unfortunately Sunderland's forefathers who were, were much smarter than the rest of us they when they set up when they set up the the town way going through through north and south main street they had the foresight and and Lauren and Linda Lapotka can probably add more to the historic thing but to keep that as our that was our green community areas that that wasn't meant to be traveled away so so although the town owns a layout it had you know it has ownership of that layout <coughs> It really wasn't meant to. It was meant for all of us to use, not just a vehicle or pedestrian. So I mean, it's, it's you're right. It's complicated, and I'd like to give John to set, to say to go ahead design a four four foot width or or whatever. But how can I do that? Which if I tell him, and and go to Boston and say, well, the only way it's going to pass is if it's uh, environmental or. You don't have the road taking, the land taking. That's I'm, tough. No, I'm not suggesting that he change the design. Uh, I'm suggesting that the letters be written for us to bring before any changes are proposed to see if a change will even no. be entertained. Okay. So I'll, I'll, I'll we're asking yeah, for the letters. Actually. We're not asking the engineer yeah, to do anything. It shouldn't cost anything really to, for us to find out if uh, the Fleet Streets engineer is going to be amenable to this. Um, we talked to her you know, multiple times per week. We're on an informal basis with her. So we can just make a phone call. We get a conference call with her and John and myself and our Rich. Um, Could so we one just get a sense kind of. Question. of the rooms. I, I think after we, yeah, after yeah. we kind of exhausted our questions yeah. and stuff, I, I think I, it's a good idea. And then to look at next steps. I want to ask a question. Is just one thing to be perfectly clear is, is curving on salt green. There isn't proposed any on salt green. And that's because of the green. Is the green. Okay. But can you just address, talk about traffic calming without any curve? I mean, if my, my whole thing is to narrow this down and try and Again, go back to the six foot sidewalk. The sidewalk here is now five feet. If we get it down to six feet with a design exception, we can keep it almost in the same place with little, not a lot of change. I know the design that was proposed would leave and it's really close to the street, but I think if we were able to get to six, six and a half, we can pretty much keep it in the same place all the way through to a nice, safe place for people to walk. I mean, people who are too afraid to get on the road with 40 and 100 cars every day, they could ride within this. this Kind of wide sidewalk. You know, just basically, could you just address calling without curving, the effect of curving, and uh, again, talk about would we be able to make the same argument for a narrow shed, narrow shed? Yeah, I can't really speak for the complete streets engineer on whether, you know, six, I have a feeling six feet wouldn't, uh, six, I've never six. seen anything that narrow, so yeah. um, again, I can't speak for her. It sounds like there's multiple options floating around, so that's when we I, I don't know, get a sense of present, you know, in priority order the the options that you would prefer. Yeah. And, um, 
you know, traffic calming is difficult. We actually don't have a lot of great luck in uh, traffic calming. It's, we've done a few projects over the years, and some of the after studies show, you know, you get a three or four mile an hour reduction in speed. And that's not a whole lot when you're saying there's 50 mile an hour speeds. Um, it's been is, is difficult. Uh, the, the raised platforms, those certainly would would do that, but not everyone wants those too. So it's, it's a very difficult time. I'd like to speak to that. Uh, we have, uh, as you can hear, community, uh, the town itself. But we have some natural calming effects that happen because of what we are. So if you come from the south and you come, you suddenly come out of open land to the trees. People do slow down. I drive that almost every day. Where they don't slow down is on North Main Street. Right. Because they come down out of a natural calming of all of those curves coming down. And suddenly, there's that wide open street. And they think, wow, head for the traffic light. Boom, and they go. So it's on North Main Street. I can see you need to think about another way to calm the traffic. The other thing is we're a farming community. We insisted on that. We have rights for that. Our farm machines, big, hefty, clumsy, slow the traffic down. If you don't know that, you don't know Main Street. Yeah. <laughs> and prepare for it. It's getting to be that and time. The other thing is we have lots of, unfortunately, parents who have to look after their kids more than they used to. So the other natural calming effect are all the parents pouring out in the morning and late in the afternoon because they're afraid to let their kids walk down the street now, for the most part, those summer coming back. The traffic backs traffic up on South Main Street. It's a great calmer. It really slows stuff down. But I imagine the tempers in the car are very noisy. Do we have any other like, new questions or anything that we haven't, anything that we feel we haven't covered at all? And, the, and I wanted to address the situation of wintertime in Sunderland. For some reason, Mother Nature seems to have blessed Sunderland in giving us more snow than any other community around here. Uh, it comes earlier, it comes in greater amounts, and it melts later. And I worry about having a salmon path placed near the street when the snow plows come speeding up and down the main streets. And I think of Sunderland as having one street. It's Main Street. It just so happens to be divided into north and south. But it gives a unity to our town. And we're all concerned about safety, safety for everyone who lives and works and enjoys this city. But with the winter, especially with the snow plows coming down, throwing the snow at such a velocity that it often takes out mailboxes, and we have to put protectors up for that. It's not just snow, it's the gravel from off the roadbed. It sometimes is thrown, and I've gone out and measured it. We haven't had much snow to do that this year, but measured it, it's eight and 10 feet up from the curb into what we call the common area. If anyone is walking that area, or riding a bicycle on that area, they're going to be hit with that drawing snow and gravel. The other thing is all of the driveways on both sides of the street, when we have to plow our driveway so that we can get in and out, the snow has to be pushed somewhere. And that would be right where this first proposed common eight to 10 foot lane would be near the highway. If you're driving and you want to come out onto the highway, you have to stop there. And any pedestrians then that are down that close to the highway or bicyclists will have to stop because you're there blocking their access. Coming back into the driveway from the street, if the combined area use pathway is closed to the street, you will have to stop completely out on the street so that you can look and see. The founders of this town were very clever. They put the sidewalk up, away from the street, so now if you can make your turn, stop, there's the sidewalk in front of you, and you can see if there's anyone riding on that or walking on that. We're having more and more usage of the sidewalk, and I worry also about 
how will the town pay for the clearing of this common uh, path, shall we call it? Uh, now, I see, since I live on South Main Street, tracks in the snow of the sidewalk before the sidewalk even gets plowed. With the snow plows going up and down all hours, sometimes a day and night, throwing snow onto that common path, I don't know how we will keep that path open. And my final point is, how will you enforce the bicyclists if you have this common path, to use the common path and not the street. You can't disallow them to use the street, surely. And in the summer, we sometimes get convoys of 10, 20, 30 bicyclists coming down the street. Uh, if they were on this common path, the pedestrians might as well not use it. So I think we have a lot of thinking to do, a lot of talking with each other to do. Um, no, to, and to before we move ahead, perhaps we could have some more discussions and save you money. Yes. So it, it sounds like in order to move ahead and ask these questions, we want to know whether we have a consensus. And so it's, well, that, that's where I was so, about to get to, to, to yeah. sort of Nancy's point. We, I want to take the temperature of the room to see where we want to go generally, because then we need to start looking at what our options are for things like traffic on the exceptions and things like that and also to Tom's point we can't keep we need to figure out what we need to do in a timely fashion also because we can't keep delaying it and increasing costs and that also has effects not just on this town but other towns involved in the tip so we kind of need to figure out how to do that and then move forward <coughs> so <coughs> I guess there's <coughs> excuse me I apologize so we have kind of like a if you really lump it into two high-level categories, you have a potential shared use path, narrow, and then narrow shared use path, and then the, the narrower shoulders, or the wider shoulders, and then not a shared use path. Right? Is that kind of if I lump it into two things? So I, I think I'd say one is the shared use path with a possible exception to make it narrower, and the other is to basically keep as much of pretty much what we have now right, with accommodating possible. bicycles and try to go with some exceptions to keep that road size down. Right, that's, that's exactly yes, what it would be, be a four foot widening versus a one foot side one foot widening, or one and a half foot side. So prior to that consensus, I, my question was because he mentioned that John, I think his name, had, we've gone, kind of gone back mm -hmm. from some initial kind of things that we're getting expanded. What, with the shared use, are we still going down to Claybrook, which the yeah. first couple of meetings yeah, were? Yeah, that part wouldn't change, right? Either, you know, we're so still it's either shared or narrowed or whatever. Right. Yeah. Yeah. It's defined that way. Yep. Thank you. Did you have a question? Mark? Is that a comment about? I mean, is that a plus or minus? In support of going to Claybrook. It's going to Claybrook's important. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Sorry, I thought you had a question. Okay, you kind of look like I'm you. Good. Were. Okay. All right. Just, can I just propose? Can we ask both questions instead of having to narrow it to one? Get some feedback. What's that? I mean, that's the two options on the table. Because both of them require a variance. Both the shared. Well, yeah, no shared path. Either, either keep it 26 feet, yep. like in 25 to 26 now, 11 foot lanes, two foot shoulders, no curving, or uh, go to a six foot side or six or six and a half foot sidewalk. So it'll be an 18 inch widening of uh, a shade you should have either in the, hopefully in the, mostly in the same location as one of the sidewalks but the way it's shown now it's on the right side. I don't see where you have that width where the sidewalks are around four feet. And so you're either going into the tree or well, you could, you could, it could vary. It could vary into the green belt and the width of the north field would have to do that in a few places to just make it work and save some trees. But I think if we had a look at what that would look like, people might like that alternative. Maybe, maybe we could split the button up tree. Tunnel through it. My question would be, would it be more likely that we would narrow the, the shared path or narrow the road? I think you'd have better luck asking for the exception to narrow the road with shoulders. Right. Slightly. So, so I right. say get rid of the shared path, get the road a little bit narrower, 
don't worry about the speed because if you repave that road, you're going to go fast anyway. I don't care what it is. But just we're talking about why. Should I write this on the widening it less? Or and then. Uh, I, yes, um, I just wanted to add a little reminder that the project is listed on the 2020 Transportation Improvement Program, um, and we redo that annually. It's, we're coming up on, in the next couple of months, redoing the list, and it's still expected to be staying on 2020. That means to keep to that time frame, you'd have to have a design that's probably around 75% ready this time next year. Okay. That's, that was one of the things we were going to ask about as we went back forward. <coughs> this time next year. And that, Maureen, if I could clarify, that it keeps it in the 2020 range? That, yes. It's okay. currently in 2020, and I expect when we endorse the next one in May, it will still be in. It looks like it'll, it'll still be in 2020. Okay. That's good. And, and the, it seems to me like, and I just. I'm kind of thinking along the lines of like what Will, what you had mentioned about keeping, a, making it consistent between North and South Main Street, and then so then you're just bringing down the width of the shoulders one foot, and I think you had mentioned that that might be something that is possible. That's one exception. Well, I don't. I, well, and as, I guess that's a question. Is he's going to go walk with the curve? He's going to go walk. Please, you could probably. Speak on no, what I, it's like now. Yeah, I, I guess the, that question is do we have the curbing in there? No. So there's no curbing. Curbing's okay. Okay. Here, I thought so, you said something about curbing though and bicycle. No curbing. Um, I, I didn't. You didn't? Um, no. I know somebody did mention it. I remember in one of the meetings, right? About yeah. and, and I've read some studies about some uh, traffic things in Europe where they're actually getting away from making the delineations less clear because it actually makes people slow down because they can't see exactly where. And you know, and especially when you talk about bikes, I mean, they do far more biking in Europe than we do here. Um, so, so we're talking no, so no, we don't think we ever mentioned putting in curbing, did we at any point in there? To address the drainage. Okay, so, no, so it then it's best to stay away from the curb. So that's good, so no curbing. Do, do we want to do like a, a, a show of hands or like people get up to one side of the room versus the other side for an option? Well, what, what, do you want, what do you want to do? Yeah. I, I, I think I can show up. How many wants a shared path? Can well, you please stand up? That's what I want to do. Right. Go, Dan. Go, Dan. I applaud that. I applaud the courage. Yeah. All right. So, 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 so I, 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 I think the, I, I think the, other, the other question, the other, the other points were, were, were to try, to, try to narrow, uh, the bike path from the five feet to four foot or whatever, um, and to keep the road with the thirty-two feet total versus. What you know, the 34 feet if we went to the full size, correct? Correct. That seems to I, be I think that I think that's consensus. And in no, we got 32 would be the five foot shoulders, right. 30 would be the 32. 32. Okay. Right. 32 would be five foot, yeah, 30 five, would be five foot. Five foot. And, and then, and then we were going to um, talk to John to see if it was a collector street or an arterial street and if it's a collector it's a, it is an it's arterial. arterial it is an arterial yep. then then they probably wouldn't let us put tables in there but I think route 9 is kind of an arterial road and they got tables so maybe we would just ask for a waiver to do that as well right. so then we get some traffic coming we get a little bit now it sounds like that kind of would be the does that seem to be the consensus in the room I just suggest that you check with public safety before you uh, decide whether to put in a speed tape. Yeah, we'll talk. We'll talk to chief. The chief. The chief. Yeah. Because I think that's my uh, chief. Is that, is that okay? okay. So are those our directions? Yeah. Yes. Does everybody feel comfortable with that? Could you do that? That's right. Well, you, you, you want to sum it up again? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so John, you get those down. All right. So, <laughs> all right, we're all set. Okay. All right. Is it helpful for us to specify the traffic coming ideas that you would be in favor of, or do we leave it to you? John's going to bring it to us the next plan. 
So, so then let's take, let's go on to the next steps. What are our next steps here for this? Write John a check. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not kidding. When can we have so, meetings? Yeah, for, for an additional 30, changes. $37,000. Right? Can, can I ask one question too, just with mm. the traffic calming um, ideas? I, I know that there's a lot of tractor trailer uh, yeah. traffic that is on, on these roads. Um, I, well, I actually live across the street from my grandfather now, but I've slept in my grandfather's house. Um, I'm blessed with a well-insulated house that doesn't hear much sound. Yep. But he has a nice bump right out front of his house. And uh, the tractor trailer truck hits that. You can hear it, I bet. It's, it's through the whole house. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, I'm just shooting out an idea of a table. It's kind of a... That's that's a good point. A question. Well, on. And farm equipment. Get, get a plow, you know, eight uh, rakes, eight rakes, twice wide, mm -hmm. banging that's on true. a speed bump. So, so I, I, there I, is a noise. Yeah. Well, if you're going to be digging, you'll be on the leeward side. You'll be digging, you'll be filling it all. That's a good point. And, and George, yeah. So before he changes his plans, we're going to go to the Mass DOT to see if they'll go to Boston to find out if we can narrow up the shoulders before yes. we make any changes. Correct. Right, because otherwise it, it, we could be spinning our wheels, spending too much money, and slowing the whole thing down. And if no other argument works, an economic argument might. We're a tourist town, and people yep. flood here to see what we have. It's not just tradition and sentiment. It's people who want true. that and come here for it. Right. Uh, Don't well, destroy it. You've got all the bikers coming up and through and people exactly. visiting, and yep, that's true, and during foliage season. Was there a question, Michael? Oh, yes. I, was I don't know what oh, sorry. Sorry. Oh, yeah. traffic calming you can do at the end of South Main Street, right by the cemetery. But I wish something could be done because I've been almost killed just trying to get my mail um, crossing the street there. South Main, yeah. Uh, it's terrible at the very beginning. They don't slow down until later. Uh, 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 I'll, I'll defer to Will, then I'll ask my question. Can yes. you count anybody slowing down? Dan, no, Dan introduced an idea about traffic calming that we haven't talked about tonight. Instead of the tables, it was a, it was a divider at the head. Oh, in the middle. Yeah. This, yep. this, not the whole way down, but just as a place when you come into town and it's the marks and you have to almost, you know, just like a... Yep, like get you and it splits you in the center. Yep. Hmm. Okay. Is that, is that something you've done on smaller roads? Yes. Yeah, we do those, and those are pretty successful. Yeah. Okay. You call them, uh, call them, there's a crosswalk, you call them a pedestrian median, median refuge island, and the traffic just splits usually there's a crosswalk at that point. So we can do that in Flavor, no Silver, and we're going to cross from the scene as well. Okay. Yep. Mm -hmm. As far as curbs on your mm -hmm. is that, mm -hmm. how is that impacting mm -hmm. this community? I know they were not included mm -hmm. to this point, but. Mm -hmm. If we add a curve, does that prejudice the narrowing? Yeah. Sort of, does that change anything? Um, if you add cost, yeah, it changes a lot of things. Yeah. It changes yeah. a lot. If you add curves, you're going to have to change all the drainage. Right now, yeah. Right now, yeah. Right now so that's, that's, a, that's a cost issue. That's not. That's not a factor in terms of whether an exception could be made. No, it's not a factor. So we could we could add curves on North Main Street without changing our ideals. Just adding to drainage. 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 And potentially speed issues. I'm just curious because I mean, I'm interested in keeping the speed staff. Yeah. It might increase them. It might increase them. Oh, yeah. right. If you know the 30 foot you add curve, I think it only, only affects the slope about. Mm -hmm. I just think that's an option if we were worried about okay. speeds. It, it, yeah. might, it might impact what people feel restricted with curving versus unrestricted without it. Mm -hmm. Well, we have it on South Main Street, like I said, it's in, yeah. So could I ask, and I'm going to echo Gary's, Gary's point, uh, uh, thanking uh, both you and your team for coming out. It's not always the uh, most easy discussions, you know, and uh, it was said earlier, it's not, nothing of this is that personal. So that, that, that said, that said, you've got, you've got all the scar tissue between your shoulder blades from prior meetings, right? <laughs> um, a couple of minutes ago, the comments about next steps were, were made, and it was about asking for some of these exceptions before we pursue uh, turning John loose on design and getting the submittals up. Is that just a correspondence thread? And, and I want to make sure that that, that energy and effort is, 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 if it's going to be up front, that, you know, we can 
garnish that effort pretty quickly. Right. And it's got to be fact-based. It's got to be all the right things. But the letters of exception should be centered around a design or a handful of things. Right. We, I think it should just be informal. Just informal. Once, once got it. it settles on the direction you'd like to request, yep. then just through John, you yep. could contact us. Mm -hmm. And then we'll informally talk about it with the complete streets engineer and Got see it. if she's on board with it. Okay. Yeah, that won't be costly at all. Okay. It'll be pretty quick. So correspondence from our office, correspondence from, from, from residents and concerned citizens. You don't need those letters yet. You could, yep. be, you could be compiling them. Yep. Putting them together. In the meantime, yep. yep. Makes sense. But just giving us your intended direction okay. and your requests. Because I don't think this dialogue ends in tonight. You should think right. about it for a little while. Yeah, yeah. So, yes. so if it does go forward that um, four foot shoulders are to be pursued, yeah. mm -hmm. that is a health and transportation <clears throat> policy directive design exception, which mm -hmm. must be approved by the Secretary of Transportation. Yep. And certainly at that point, letters and right. any other. Uh, and that's where that feedback comes in. So, okay. Okay. You know, regardless of the initial discussion with the complete streets engineer, ultimately it's the Secretary of Transportation that, that will grant or not grant the exception. Right. That's really helpful. Yeah. Appreciate that. And that makes sense to start compiling it now so that we're ready to roll because we want to can't try to keep the timeline moving along. Right. Okay. Yeah. So the letters exception. Uh, no, actually, you, you could send them through, through our local district office here. So, you know, 811 North King Street. North King. <laughs> oh, okay. I, I, I didn't we did. I would didn't expect, we would ready. expect all of you at the next annual town meeting because there's going to have to be additional funds appropriated yes. to uh, modify the design, the, the present design. So you need to come and you need to support, you have to support that. Um, the, the second thing is, is that, and, and we'll have another meeting, but I, some, sometimes when someone says you ask somebody a question and then you expect a, you expect a, you expect a return answer, there's two ways the answers can re be returned to you. They can be a yes, a yes form or the no form. Um, and if it comes in the no form, we really don't have a lot of options. We have to follow their, we have to follow their, their guidance. Um, so I just want every you know everybody to understand that you know we're going to try. Your letters are going to help, but remember, there's a yes and a no that can come back, and we have to be able to uh, to work with those two answers. Where is our representative and senator on this matter? Have they been informed? Do they know what our concerns are? One's retiring, and one has a new office in the basement. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, we we can we'll, we can we can we can we can we'll, we'll talk to we'll talk to them. Good. I, I mean, they'll they'll be there. Steve, Steve Kulik, um, many of you know Steve for a long time. We we have never. I don't think there's any representative group, any representative that's ever been, done a nicer job than Steve when it comes to the town of Sunderland. But I just so, wonder has has been briefed on this particular matter. I would say, well, for starters, the answer, other than informally, the answer is no, because we haven't come up with a design consensus yet. Right. It's kind of hard to, it's kind of hard to right. get a map animated when we haven't made up our own mind. But I think we have now, haven't we? Well, that could be. I think we're closer. Sounds we're a lot closer. Right. Yep. Yes. One last question. Uh, before the process is signed and delivered and sent on to Boston, will the townspeople of Sunderland have the right to vote on it? Or are we doing no taxation without representation? <laughs> Which is a good old Massachusetts. <laughs> <laughs> the last guy that said, said that to us was wearing a bolo tie. That's right. Um, yeah. I Tom, what I'm really saying I, I, is, I know. Can, you know, can, can, one size doesn't we, fit all. Why does Sunderland have to wear? My clothes wouldn't fit you, and vice versa. Right. So, but but you, know, you, you, you just, I, I think, you, you know, what, you know what's interesting is any. It, I think all of you, um, everybody in the room, I've probably seen around a lot. Some of them like Gary, Peter, Nancy, Dan, Helen. I see more often. Um, but I think you all know us, and I don't think there's 
uh, um, uh, three people sit on a board of selectmen that do not take input greater than the three of us. So we always, you, and, and, and please don't take this the wrong way, anybody, but when this first started, there was one or two people that were sitting in the audience. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, the only, and the only reason it became more, and, and, and actually two of the people were probably from the FERCOG when, when yeah. we first started. <laughs> yeah. right. So, so it, I, I just want to say that we, we've, we've been calling for a lot of um, uh, input on this. Um, and, and, and before before you make me forget, uh, I did want to say something to Mass Highway because what really started the I think what started the conversation is that town meeting will correct me if I'm wrong, but the board had said, oh by the way, Mass Highway may be looking at something doing something at the intersection. Right. Um, yes. And I think I think that really that really tweaked a lot of people to, to become more interested in, in what was happening on the North Main Street um, project. Right. So I would I would just say um, that and, and, and thank you for reminding me that Mass Highway um, when if when and if you decide to look at trying to do something differently at this intersection here, please. Uh, reach out to us because we we want to participate in that as well yeah. will you please then spread the word about yeah. your meetings and the subject of those meetings in a yeah. way in which i can be informed as you know i'm i know often we will spoken I, and i believe in this town and i want to support the town absolutely but i didn't know about your various meetings and i don't know how i can be informed well we usually we always put them on the website always posted that, that's one but you place see that that's what everyone says. We have them on the website. Yeah. How frequently does one need to go to the website? I tell this to the people where I work mm -hmm. who tell me that same thing. And I say, I don't have time to check everyone's website every day to find out. If so let, let me ask you a question then, because this is a perennial problem. That, and I, I find it interesting that in a day and age when we have far more communication tools than we have ever had, that I still hear the same Issues. Too much, too much communication. Post it. So put it up in the post what, office if the post office will allow. Well, it, it's actually posted in the town hall. It's in the newspapers, and then it's, it's on the website. The, front. the only thing we don't do at the moment because we don't can't afford to staff is we don't run a full gamut of social media. Um, but neither do I. <laughs> so I, I, I so I, I I'm not sure what other things. You know, uh, it would help. Just change the email addresses of everyone who is interested, and then just pop them we'll, out of we'll, group email. We'll, we'll try. Yeah, we'll, I, I we'll, mean, we'll, we'll, yeah, we'll, we'll try. To, I, I mean, that's that's. You because know, we I'm have we we have great penetrate. We have great penetration. If you have children in school, um, we can get it into the the their thing. If you sometimes in the in the. In the, the the library, they have the sun and lunar that goes out. Uh, that's another communication device that's out there. But it's trying. You, you're right. And it's how to get. It, it's how to get everybody informed of all the stuff that. And and sometimes you you may not want to be informed until you want to be informed. I mean, and that's the yeah. hard part. Would you prefer push notifications <laughs> like emails or would, texts or something along those lines? I would everyone's email address, and I I'm in a lot of group serves, and then everyone. That's the email about this meeting. If you don't want to read them, you trash them. Okay, we can we can we can look at something. So just pick the email. One second. Did you just have a did you have a question? I would support the email. I've okay. never even been on the Sunderland website. I don't know anything about it. Okay. I do the reporter. I've never seen it in the reporter. Um, but like a mailing, when things have affected my property, I've received a notice in the mail. Right, you're in a button. And I felt that People on Main Street yep. should have gotten a mailing about this. If I didn't receive the email from Liz, I never would have. I never heard of any of these meetings. The, pro the project's not on South Main, just to be clear. You wouldn't have gotten one anyway. Yeah. It's only for the North Main Street. Yes, did you it's on North Main Street, and I didn't get a mail. That's okay. <laughs> and when I, when I, I was just going to reiterate that when I built my house, I had to tie into the sewer, and I had to notify mm -hmm. all your all butters. And, yeah. butters, and it cost yep. me 60 bucks, and... Two of them are family, and you know it, it was kind of a humorous thing. Um, but that might be a thing where, if it is North Main Street, those people might, sure. you know, because the website thing works for updated people, but sure. sometimes it's hard for. Oh. It, it's a challenge because you got to go through all the different communication channels, right. and sometimes it affects everybody. So then, do you 
Right. Yeah. I just want to know if your family gave you the money back. <laughs> <laughs> no. Yeah, no, exactly. Three of them on open back because they're certified mail. So. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and again, again, for us, having you all here tonight makes it, it does make it much easier to sit at this table to listen to your to listen to your concerns, and, and that's. And, and that's just that just us and, and it, it is important and we like to thank Max Highway for coming tonight because right. sometimes we don't do these projects every day. How many and how many times have you left with an applause, right? <laughs> but we, we don't do these we don't do these projects all, all the time, so it's it's sometimes it's difficult to know what, what we can do. So and we appreciate the feedback on the on the process because I think that's one of the things too that kind of right is we don't know about the process and then we go through it and you find out things as you go along that you wish wow we wish we had known that earlier you know so that that, that helps a lot and we appreciate it so yeah um, so how does everybody feel about at least our direction feel a little better tonight at least do you want to say something. Good. All right. Thanks. No, thanks I for just, coming. I appreciate uh, everybody. If you'd like me to say something, I'll thank everyone for coming here. Sure. Too. Um, I, for those of you that don't know me, my name's Pat Ball. I'm the highway director here for District Two, Mass DOT. I live in Sunderland, actually. And, uh, I'm North Main. I shouldn't have. Told you that. <laughs> uh, no, but uh, it, it's good for us as well to sit here and hear the community's concerns and. And uh, it's always good to understand where where people are coming from, what their concerns are, and it, it makes it easier for us to work with local communities. Nothing bad about this tonight. And there's still that you know, Shays okay. Rebellion show. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, I understand how standards start and things like that, but, right. but you know, it's just it, do. it happens. So, so <laughs> before, everybody, before, before, before everybody leaves, just remind everybody, Monday night there is a caucus here uh, That's where right. people run, mm -hmm. and the uh, moderator has decided not to run, so there is a position open as moderator. At least. And our, and our town administrator has one comment. And if like you would like to be on an email list for North Main Street Reconstruction, if you could email me your email address, I'll create a, a list for those of you who want to be notified by email, and we'll try to get them out by regular mail as well. What's your what email? Is your email address? Then? Town admin at townofsunderland.us. And you can also, if you go to the, I hate to say it, but if you go to the website, <laughs> you can also click a link there. The website for the for the <laughs> for her emails. Yeah. Thank you. Town admin. Thanks so much. Appreciate it. Yeah. Motion to adjourn. Uh, do we have a second for adjournment? Yeah. 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 Yeah.